untap your full potential with the untapped deck tracker. Both the in-game overlay and the personal stats provide a lot of value. Download it for free today using the link below and you'll be supporting the channel at the same time. Hello and welcome to another standard gameplay video. Today we're taking a look at Blue White Soldiers, recorded during the Early Access event, so thanks to Wizards for letting me participate. Got access to this fully unlocked account to preview some of the new cards from the Brothers War. And Blue White Soldiers got a ton of new additions, starting with one of its lands, Fortified Beachhead, can enter untapped if we control a soldier or reveal a soldier from our hand, and then 5 mana tap it, and soldiers we control get plus 1 plus 1 until end of turn, so great mana sink in the late game. And then another great addition is the Sky Strike Officer, a 3 mana 2 3 human soldier with flying, saying whenever the officer attacks, create a 1 1 colorless soldier artifact creature token. And we can also tap 3 untapped soldiers we control at any time. The soldiers can even have summoning sickness for this ability, and we get to draw a card. So ideally, we can play Sky Strike Officer with two other soldiers already in play. So at the very least, even if the opponent removes our Sky Strike Officer, we can still draw a card on the way out. And if the opponent does doesn't answer our Sky Strike Officer, it can quickly take over the game, making an army of soldier tokens and drawing a ton of extra cards. And then another great 3-drop from the Brothers War is Siege Veteran, 3 mana 2-2 two, two human soldier, saying at the beginning of combat on your turn, put a plus one plus one counter on target creature you control, so similar to the rotated Luminarch Aspirant. And then whenever another non-token soldier you control dies, create a 1-1 one, one colorless soldier artifact creature token in return. So another great way to add power and toughness to the board, and give us a bit of insurance against removal and sweeper effects, as we'll still get some replacement 1-1 one, one tokens. And then we of course still get to play with a full set of Valiant Veteran from Dominaria United. Didn't see a ton of plain standard before the Brothers War, but makes for a perfect Lord effect in this deck, giving other soldiers plus one plus one. And we can even exile it from our graveyard for five mana to put a plus one plus one counter on each soldier we control. Then we also have two copies of a Zephyr Sentinel, 2-1 with Flash and Flying. When it enters, we can return up to one other target creature we control to its owner's hand. If it was a soldier, put an additional plus one counter to the Sentinel, so it turns into a 3-2 flyer for two with Flash that can maybe save one of our creatures from removal. Can even pick up our Resolute Reinforcements, the two mana 1-1 one, one human soldier with Flash that when it enters makes a 1-1 one, one soldier token, so we can maybe pick up the Reinforcements with Sentinel to once again replay it and make an extra soldier token in the process. All these flash creatures could also combine well with a few counter spells, but I'm not playing any counter spells myself in this build, just to kind of push the soldier tribal synergies as far as possible, but you can always come back and potentially sprinkle in some permission spells if you deem it necessary. But Thalia also kind of disincentivizes us from playing any non-creature spells, the 2-1 taxing non-creature spells by one, also as first strike, so also pairs nicely with any additional plus one plus one bonuses. Then I've got some one-off legends, including Danik as a 2-3 lifelink that we can maybe disturb out of the graveyard. Lifelink also useful against opposing aggressive decks, especially if we increase its power and toughness. And then we've got the Vanguard Aviator, a 3-2 flyer, saying whenever we attack with five or more soldiers, creatures we control get plus one plus one and gain flying until end of turn. So we can easily come up with a few token makers, with the reinforcements, with our Sky Strike Officer, and then all of a sudden the Aviator can kill the opponent out of nowhere. And then at one mana, we've got the full set of Recruitment Officer, another great new addition, a 2-1 Soldier. And for four mana, I can look at the top four cards of our library to reveal a creature with mana value three or less from among them and put it into our hand. And as you can see here, all our creatures fit that criteria. And then we also have the full set of Spectrum Sentinel, not a particularly impressive card, but I just wanted to make sure to keep the curve nice and low and play an extra one drop. So we're more likely to have the curve of one drop, two drop, and then turn three officer draw card right away. Of course, we can achieve that as well if we play a turn two reinforcement, but that's not always going to be the case in our opening hand. And then the Sentinel has protection from multicolored, can come up in some matchups. And then whenever non-basic land enters under an opponent's control, we also gain one life. So a bit of additional life gain can never hurt. And then of course our removal spell of choice, also a creature Brutal Cathar to exile an opposing creature when it enters. Can maybe switch between day and night and wreak havoc on the opponent's board as well. And then a mana base besides Beachhead also gets to play with Secluded Courtyard, naming Soldier. So another perfect dual land in this deck that comes into play untapped. 
still have a darker waste and deserted beach, although honestly you could potentially cut some of these other dual lands since our mana base is so consistent already. Couple basics and then Igancho and Soaring City as additional mana sinks could easily support a third color in this soldier tribal build thanks to the beachhead and secluded courtyard, but for now I don't really see a reason to dip into a third color since the power level is already quite high in just blue-white. So yeah, that's our deck, now let's jump in some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play, and what do we think of this one? Um, yeah, could be okay. Can just play a tapped beachhead. Turn to Thalia. Hopefully pick up a third lane. Facing Kumano. They're likely to play creatures this turn, so Thalia's not going to be too impactful. So up against Mono Red, it seems, with the new Mishra's Foundry. And a Lizard Blade's a pretty nice turn 2 play. Okay. I guess we'll play Veteran here. And pass. Could also offer the trade. But I would rather stay back and... Potentially hold off the 2-2. Two -two. And then we have a back of Thalia anyways. Opponent drew double foundry, so they're probably out of lands in hand. Which means all spells. And a lightning strike takes care of Thalia. Do we trade veteran for Kumano? I don't think we do. Back up Thalia and attack, since I'm not planning to block. And a Twin Shot Sniper, only two mana here to kill Thalia. I really need our third land. Then it has lifelink at least. It equips the etching. Alright. Probably trade for a burn spell here. Nope. And a patchwork automaton with extra counter. Alright, there we go. Cathar Exile Blades. And we're back in business. Foundry animates. And we'll block with a Brutal Cathar. This is one extra mana to activate, so... Opponent might have missed that interaction. And uh, yeah, we're about to take over now with Officer. Plus another one drop. Can draw. Switch it back to daytime, exile another creature. Another Kumano. Well, we might have turned the corner here with a timely Denik and a slight miss sequence from our opponents. I'm liking Siege Veteran plus Sentinel. And then I can draw two cards end of turn. Maybe counter on Brutal Cathar or on the veteran here. Try and keep it safe from a burn spell. Right now they would be killing the Brutal Cathar anyway. 
Ronan cycled. Gain some life. And our opponent packs it in. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. Turn two, probably Thalia. Turn three, Officer. Take it from there. Put on blue rat with automaton, so artifacts. Can't quite excel it with brutal Cathar, so play officer attack for two. And hope officer survives for a turn, so we can draw a card. Thran Spider's interesting, makes a power stone for each player. Can maybe use it to activate our beachhead at some point. For now, I guess Siege Veteran looks good. Put count from Officer, so it's less likely to die to 3 damage burn spell. Although they might have Voltage Surge, which deals 4. Still probably worthwhile. And we'll pass. Automaton attacks. Yeah, I'll take it. I'm not trusting the automaton here. They probably have some way to pump it at instant speed. Otherwise, Thalia would be a great way to block it. Okay, now we could also play Brutal Cathar and then use the Power Stone to pay for Ward, which is another interesting application of the Power Stone token. Could also lead with Sentinel, which I guess also uses the Power Stone token. Other option was just exiling the Spider and then playing Veteran. And then I would have been able to draw two instead of just one card. Right, points go to shore up to protect it. Makes sense. And then could put counter on officer, attack. And then still draw. Sure. Right, opponent's got a bounce spell. So we'll have to draw on the way out. And I guess tap something like this. So no big deal, just replay it next turn. Reactor for three mana. Can eventually take care of one of our creatures. Good synergy with a spider as well, putting multiple artifacts in play at the same time. Could double block. Make them use whatever author trick they have. Although, once we have a veteran in play, it's going to be easier to double block. And can't quite double veteran, but officer plus veteran looks good. Can also use the power stone to channel Iganjo, which we can do thanks to Thalia being a legendary. And how about counter on a Brutal Cathar here? Attack with all. But we've got a shore up to untap Automaton. That's too bad, so my gun just not going to work on the Automaton. But we can take care of the spider. Bones at 12. Could have also left myself with an extra untapped creature to draw with officer. Although at this point I think I'm just looking to end the game as quickly as possible. A reactor up to two counters can take care of Valiant Veteran. 
or Thalia. And then there's also the Beachhead, which we can still activate. Reinforcement's also a great draw. So options are plenty. Beachhead is 5 mana. So just these two attacking. If I attack with all what happens, Chum Brutal Cathar take 10. Not quite enough. And make our first soldier token as well. So we should have most angles covered. Reinforcements lets us make two tokens so we can draw two with officer end of turn. And now Thran Spider will make it easier to activate Beachhead. And our opponent explodes. Sweet. On to the next one. Alright, we're on the play with a decent hand. Turn to probably Thalia. Can maybe wait to play Officer until we can uh, draw right away. Opponent won't be able to use any one mana removal, even if they had it. Up against a mono red. The more efficient curve would still be Officer, next turn double, two drop. So that's probably still worthwhile. And then I'll keep Thalia back to block. We're not trying to outrace Mono Red. In case they kill Officer, I can at least hold off the adversary. Stormseeker's fine. Okay. Take three. And a Brutal Cathar will also come in handy. For now, Danik plus Aviator. And then we can still draw with the Officer. Start making tokens, so next turn we could already enable the Aviator. There's a Raichu, so yeah, decent curve from our opponent. I guess they just missed on a turn one Kumano. But the soldier's putting up an impressive board. Opponent goes for an all-out attack, so that kind of forces them to put counter on adversary. How close am I to killing the opponents? If I pump the team next turn. I have 15 next turn, one short of activating Beachhead, which would give me a lethal otherwise. So I guess it's probably okay to trade. Or at the very least, I guess block Stormseeker. Can double block it with Danik and a 1-1. One -one. And then probably okay to trade Aviator for Raiju. And just play the long game here. But uh, we're pretty close to just killing the opponent next turn already. Alright, let's draw. Another officer is nice. And an extra one drop. So... We can play Sentinel and Officer. Attack with all and then still draw a card. And then have a Brutal Cathar left over. And then next turn maybe activate Beachhead. Another Stormseeker. Don't know if it can afford to attack, but opponent's in trouble either way. Yeah, I'll just take it. With Spear, a little bit late to the party. And there's Deserted Beach to activate Beachhead. Veteran would also be nice, but yeah, can just tank with the team. 
make a bunch more one ones. And a nice secret anthem effect built into our mana base. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems keepable. Turn to Thalia. Ideally, we pick up a one drop here. So we could have drawn with Officer turn 3, but now I'll just go with Thalia into Officer. Put in blue black, so can expect quite a bit of interaction. Siphon Insight, that one's not too bad. Although it does point towards a very controlling build from our opponent. Including potential sweepers, which we're quite vulnerable to. They found a Denik. And we'll just play Officer and pass. A Liliana to force a sacrifice. Goodbye, Thalia. Off you go. And we can soak up two damage. Okay, so we get to take out Liliana. Play another officer, I think. And the 1 1 token will protect us against future edict effects. Fine. I know when I'm not wanted. We're also close to activating the beachhead. Vortex kicked, gets rid of Officer for good. But we're slowly building up an army. So Officer can attack. After playing Veteran, I guess even the token can attack, since we can still play Sentinel and draw. And then I'll draw main phase in case we find a relevant 2-drop. Play another Sentinel, I think. Might be overextending a bit. But next turn we're threatening a ton of damage with the uh, Beachhead. Opponent's two callers, so I'm not sure if they're playing drag to the bottom. It's going to be a Blade Coil Serpent instead. Okay, can make us discard and can draw. But luckily we just had lands in hand. Thalia, the new addition. So if I can find a land, I could maybe set up some better attacks, although I'm likely just attacking with Officer. Either way, fine to draw first. Sentinels also have protection from Denik. Found another 1-drop. So let's see. I guess play Officer. Can draw. In case I find another veteran, for instance, to pump officer before attacking. Alright, just a land. Attack. And then I might be better off activating recruitment officer as opposed to playing Thalia. Although playing Thalia is also decent. I guess keeping Thalia is better in case of a board wipe. And then I should maybe activate this now where I can pass and then represent some more interaction since I'm unlikely to necessarily deploy an extra one drop I find. Right, march to kill officer at long last. That happens. Put him back up to 19. But we still have our recruitment officer as a nice mana sink at least. If Denik dies, we can get it back from our graveyard. And another veteran will do. Alright, so play Thalia to shut down any one mana interaction. So we don't need to fear any of those. Play another veteran. And then can probably set up some big attack. 
everyone except for Valiant Veteran. Although let's say I attack with everyone including Veteran, they block it with Serpent, Danik trumps the 4-3, they take 9 plus 6, so it's not quite lethal, so we'll keep Veteran back. And if they want to trade Serpent for Officer, that's fine by me. And then next turn, we're looking to activate Beachhead to attack for lethal. One falls to three. And our opponent explodes. Awesome. Soldier Tribal gets it done. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. No one drop, sadly, to draw with Officer right away. If we have the Token Maker turn two, that's another way to get to the action a turn sooner. Probably no reason to reveal any soldiers here. Turn one frontliner, okay. Opponent might be on mono white aggro. Or also soldier tribal. In which case, Brutal Cathar should come in handy, officer to eventually take over. And 2 1 first rank is also helpful. It's gonna be an intrepid adversary for now. No good attack. And another Brutal Cathar. So opponent could have their own Cathar next turn to exile Thalia, if that's the case. I'm probably still happy playing Officer. And then next turn Cathar exiles Cathar, and we can draw. It's going to be a Siege Veteran instead. That's definitely worth exiling. So they could attack with both and basically sacrifice a frontliner. Um, sure. We'll be replaced by 1-1 one, one from the Siege Veteran. Definitely a card we could be playing ourselves. It's kind of tricky to decide which one drops to include. But uh, yeah, Brutal Cathar. Exile Siege Veteran looks good. And then attack with probably just Officer. Play another Recruitment Officer. And we can start drawing. Alright, Adversary to pump the team this time. That one we might exile with a second Cathar. Still not opposed to double blocking the 5-3 either. And then the question is, is it with Officer or with Thalia? Given that we have another Sky Strike in hand, we're probably not going to run out of card advantage anytime soon. So we'll hang on to Thalia, in case the opponent has some non-creature spells. And then draw on the way out. Veteran's great. Might end up drawing main phase if I don't hit my land drop. So we can double spell, but there we go. Okay. A veteran could even wait on exiling adversary, just play another officer for now. Attack with her flyer. Probably fine to hit with Thalia as well. Although I guess they could double block and kill it. Uh, is that true? I guess it's not true because killing adversary shrinks the 2 2 into a 1 1. Opponent takes it. And despite our opponent being at 22 still, it's not going to take long to completely take over. Siege Veteran, we're happy to exile. And a hotshot mechanic. That one's not a soldier. Frontliner is. Bonus empty handed. And we can't forget to draw end of turn. Yeah, an unopposed officer is quite the card. We can activate our beachhead too now if we'd like. Although, probably fine to just attack with our flyers. Cathar, Sentinel, see what we draw. Maybe start there.
and our opponent has seen enough, understandably. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and we have a decent start. Double recruitment officer, hopefully pick up a third land for a siege veteran. And then a Valiant veteran to pump the team. This is the type of hand that would definitely benefit from a Sky Strike officer as well. All right, now we get to curve out a bit better. And I'm kind of liking reinforcements to then have a bigger board presence for Valiant Veteran. Opponent Mono Black. So they could have removal at the ready, in which case I'm hesitant to play out my more valuable cards. Our opponent's going to cut down the officer now. They could still have another cut down for Siege Veteran, but I think I still give it a shot here. Alternatively, I could go Recruitment plus Valiant Veteran. I think this is probably still slightly better, get the counters going. And then counter on reinforcements. If they had another cut down, we would have seen it. Blast Zone can also eventually deal with some of our creatures. And a Flesh Gorger 3-3 three, three, Menace a Lifelink. Okay. So, yeah, we're just gonna empty out our hand pretty much. Veteran to pump the team. And then Siege Veteran probably okay to pump itself now. as opposed to pumping the token, so that can attack. And if they take the trade, we get a 1-1 token in return, at least. Okay. And then there's still the recruitment officer as a mana sink. Misery's Shadow is a good one. Can grow up to a 4-4 right now. Ooh, Vanguard Aviator threatens to give the entire team flying next turn. So let's see. Do I still want to attack with anyone? I guess I could pump just uh, Resolute Reinforcements. Attack with that. And then we'll see if they want to trade for Misery's Shadow. I guess now... It would exile my creature, but it would also get rid of the shadow for future Siege Veteran synergies. All right, it's going to be Infernal Grasp instead, so that still exiles because of Misery's Shadow, so we don't get a replacement token. Probably still worth it to play Aviator, and then maybe next turn attack with all. Otherwise, activating Recruitment Officer would have been an option. So yeah, this Misery's Shadow does nerf a lot of our synergies. Veteran won't be able to be activated from the graveyard. Siege Veteran doesn't make any tokens. But we'll see if our aggressive start can still get there. If our opponent's out of removal, just plays a creature, we're golden. This is my home, and I don't appreciate it when people touch Liliana will get rid of a token. <laughs> Not the end of the world. You ever heard of personal space? And a brutal Cathars excellence. Okay, maybe Exile Misery's Shadow here. Or I can Exile Flesh Gorger. Opponent could of course still have some instant speed interaction to mess things up. Yeah, this might be better. And then we also get an extra counter, cannot forget. So maybe put that on Veteran. And then if I attack with all, best case scenario for the opponent, they kill Veteran and uh, ambush the officer. Still seems fine. Alright, they've got to go for the throat on Brutal Cathar. Get back Misery Shadow. Probably not as good as just killing Valiant Veteran at this point, but... Yeah, our opponent might just be dead here. 
I guess jumping with Misery Shadow keeps him alive. Valiant Veteran will still be exiled here since the Shadow still kind of sees it the moment it goes away. But at two life, Pono needs something pretty special to recover. Alright, GG's. Got very close to actually getting the five creatures for Aviator. And uh, don't have a beachhead here. So we'll just attack. Counter on the token, maybe. Could activate our recruitment officer some more, but let's just end the game. Sweet. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, and our hand seems fine. We've got turn two reinforcements, can maybe pick it up with a sentinel at some point to make an extra 1-1 one -one token. And then veteran to pump the team. Okay, officer's great, so now reinforcements into officer means we get to draw. Our opponent black-white. And a tainted adversary. Okay. And we'll pass, so we can start drawing. Opponent does have the removal spell at the ready, but we get to draw one card on the way out. Could have also tried to wait until like 5 mana to use Zephyr Sentinel to save it, but this will create enough of a tempo advantage that we should be fine. So we can play double veteran here if we'd like, and smash, or I can play one veteran attack and keep up Zephyr Sentinel. Yeah, we'll uh, diversify a little bit here, not sure what the opponent's deck is playing exactly. And uh, can always Sentinel pick up reinforcements. Alright, Warplow, just a 1-1 one -one Death Touch here. And another one. So, taking to the skies with a Sentinel seems like a good idea. Okay, and then we're also close to activating the Beachhead. For now, Veteran, Sentinel, and Smash with our Flyer at the very least. Couple more 3-3s three coming up, and about to be 4-4s. Four so we might be able to kill them next turn. Right, destroy Evil, actually killing Sentinel. It flew a little bit too close to the sun here, getting too large. Fair enough. So let's assume our opponent has a spot removal spell left for veteran. Alright, they've got their own reinforcements. Siege veteran's not bad either. So what if I just move to combats with the beachhead available, attack with all. They trade for double veteran trade for Sentinel, and then they would still have to chump with the reinforcements, so we're basically trading off most of our board, and that's even before I activate the Beachhead. So in that case, playing Veteran first to get a bunch of replacement 1-1 one -one seems great. And pump, I guess, incentivize the opponent to block our actual creature and not our token here. Attack with all. And then we still have the Veteran out of the graveyard. So that's fine. Yeah, the soldier deck goes wide, it goes tall, it draws cards, it has a bit of removal. Could even run some counter spells, which go well with the uh, instant speed reinforcements and sentinel, so you could potentially play four sentinel, four reinforcements, and then sprinkle in a few more counter spells to have answers to the opponent's big play. 
Although in a metagame with a lot of aggressive decks, I kind of just prefer the all-creature approach. So it kind of depends what you expect to face. And yeah, three replacement 1-1s. One Next turn can put plus one counters on the team, activate Beachhead. So plenty of mana sinks available too. So yeah, quite happy with how this blue-white soldier deck turned out. The mana base is incredibly consistent with a ton of untapped dual lands specifically for the soldier tribe. So any additional soldiers that are printed could potentially allow us to splash a third color if we deem that uh, worthwhile. So that's definitely not a stretch. So be on the lookout for more soldiers in future expansions too. There may be some already out there that we can consider splashing. But for now, I think blue-white has enough power level that we don't really need to stretch the mana base to three colors. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. I want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.